as a human fetus. I remind me to show you about the woman from Spain who's found fetuses looking down from Google Earth at Jordan in the landscape of the different humans development and of the different serpents. She asked me to be on her Skype presentation, but I'm not ready yet.
I'm here at the Sage Wall with Dr. Sam from Bosnia. Discovered this wall a few years ago when I kept hearing rumors about this incredible wall at Sage Mountain Center. But when we came here to first see it, we were told over and over and over again, no, this is just natural. The geologists have been here. This is just a normal wall that just occurred naturally. However, the reason we know that this has been intentionally constructed is granite does not split in 90 degree consistent corners, angles. You see all the 90 degree angles here, the polygonal stone that moves in between the angles to make this a smooth wall covered with geopolymer concrete at one time. This is granite. Granite does not split at 90 degree angles. It's also extremely consistent and symmetrical. We know that it's about 275 feet long, but it extends under the dirt on up. Very high up on this mountain, claimed it there one time, looked to the adjacent mountain, and there's a humongous T block, a block that's a perfect T, symmetrical, huge up on top. There are crystals in the Minu Museum in Butte, which were found in this area. The crystal is about so high, one crystal point is amethyst. It was found very close to here. The people that own Sage Mountain Center have also found a number of crystals. Crystals is part of the technology of the ancient civilizations. It helps create the energy. So I brought many people here. This is on private land. Sage Mountain Center is a retreat center, completely off the grid, with gardens, with um, beautiful labyrinths, cabins, and this is on their land. Linda Welch tells me the story of how they made a deal with the man that owned this to work for him and to pay him a little tiny bit at a time because they wanted this land, because they wanted this wall. And over the years, they worked with this man and finally obtained the rights to a sage wall. It's on private property. We appreciate that because it's, un it's under good hands. When I first came here, it was covered with dead trees and branches. And after I insisted that this was a cyclopean wall, that it was constructed, within the next week, they come and cleared all the trees so that they groomed it so that people can come here. There's a beautiful trail coming up the mountain that's completely marked. So it's private property. If you want to come here, you need to contact the Sage Mountain Center, get permission, and then you have a self-guided tour. Come yourself. Um, I've also brought a shaman here from um, Colombia who played crystal bowls and, and did some beautiful shamanic journeys here. We've done many a ceremony of using corn pollen and flowers and ceremonies from all different types of cultures, Native American, Mayan, South African, and this becomes a ceremonial ground. And because of the energies in these walls, people see visions together. So we love Sage Mountain Wall because it's protected. One of the few places that protected. And there cannot be any controlled burns here. This is private land. Um, it is not open for uh, for sale, for bartering. It's private land and it's protected. And that's about the only site that we know of that's completely protected this way in Montana. Uh, the largest block here, they tell me is about 50 tons. But Dr. Sam has measured it more exactly. So this is Julie Ryder, the Montana Majors. I have a sage wall above Sage Mountain City. Julie. Hi, my name is Dr. Sevas Managic. I'm the megalithic and pyramid sites researcher all over the planet. I'm the, the discoverer of the Bosnian pyramids, the largest and the oldest on the planet. And we have proven that Bosnian pyramids are actually energy amplifiers. And a matter of fact, that's what most of the megalithic and pyramid sites were built for, to amplify the energies. The new time is coming, 21st century. They need new sciences, the pyramid science, the megalithic science that will prove that those sites are not built for the religious ceremonial purposes, to sacrifice the enemies, or to be tombs. Today I have a great pleasure to be in a company with uh, Julie Ryder here in the great state of Montana. We are the Sage Mountain. And she is one very enthusiastic, open-minded, 
researcher who combines the physical and spiritual reality. Without that combination, we cannot find answers to any serious and old megalithic site. Behind me is what uh, she named the wall, the artificial wall, since we are in Sega Mountain, Sega Wall, right? Sage Wall. Sage Wall, sorry, Sage Wall. Now, there is a big question. If this wall is artificially made or if it is a natural occurrence. I will come to that. Before that, I want to show some of the measurements that I have done today. When I go to different sites, I take 10, 15 instruments, today a little bit less, but nevertheless, we're going to see some results. This is October, unusually beautiful, nice and hot weather here in Montana. So, temperature 54 to 57 degrees. Temperature changes while you are here at the wall, which is also interesting. Humidity, the same thing. It goes anywhere from 34 to 43.5 percentage humidity. Weather is sunny, visibility excellent. Now, the first measurements I did was with this instrument right here. It's called air ion counter. It measures the concentration of the ions. Ions can be negative and positive. Negative ions are good for us. Why? Because they clear the atmosphere from the dust, smog, pollen, microbes. They came in our bodies as well. Now, the concentration of negative ions at this place was between 400 and 600. It's nothing spectacular. In our homes, it's about 20, 30 or 50 negative ions per cubic centimeter. In the cities, about 100 to 150. At the mountains, anywhere from 300 to 1000. So this is something that you would expect in this beautiful forest. Positive ions, they oscillate anywhere between 300 and 1000. So, if you want to have a healing effect, then you have to have many negative ions more than positive. This is not the case. So this is not the place where the healing ceremonies are done. The next measurement is this mirror. This is EMR mirror. That's one fix up on uh, EM smog if it is not healthy, place not healthy to be. Or... Now, this is very good if you have a lot of appliances, a lot of technology, tablets, more cell phones, computers, routers, microwaves, TVs. And you will see that this instrument works like crazy. It goes from green to yellow and then to red. Not good. Here the values are always at the zero, meaning a very nice, calm place to be. Next one. This is a EMF. It measures uh, several frequencies. For example, it measures magnetic field. You see how it is green. It measures electrical field, green, RF, radio frequencies, 0, 0.00. Again, proving very nice place, very pleasant place to spend time. Now, this cool instrument is called Experimental Life Energy Mirror. It is based on the work of American medicine, medical doctor, William Wright. 100 years back. William Wright invented an instrument to measure organ energy, organ meter, or life energy, or in Eastern traditions, Tibet, India, China, called prana or chi. So, with this instrument, you can say how. What is the level of our vitality, of our life energy, 
and uh, it works on a scale from 0 to 100. For example, on, it's about 20 on a scale from 0 to 100. Come to the wall, it's about 30. Meaning that the wall has a higher level of the life energy than the surrounding area. Something fills it up with the energy. Humans, like that, here, mining, and also sex, on the other hand, a lot of people. Well, 85, almost 90. So, this is the difference between living beings and uh, stones. But being at 30, again, very present, higher than the ground. Ground is at 20. Also, I measure the ultrasound. Ultrasound, basically, here there is no signal. Signal, I measure the infrasound. Very, very deep sound. It's very busy. Something is happening inside. What's happening, I don't know, but it's the indication that something is happening. Now, I'm coming to maybe the most interesting stuff. And that's the orientation of this wall. The orientation is not north-south. To be exact, the orientation is northwest, southeast. Northwest, 350 degrees. Southeast, 135 degrees. People think that uh, during uh, major days, like some solstice, the sun rises east. Uh, not true. The sun rises uh, northeast. I think uh, the winter time, winter solstice, again it is east, no, it is southeast. And uh, during the sunset, in the summer, summer solstice, it is uh, southwest, winter northwest. And this is the orientation of this wall. Northwest, southeast, meaning it is oriented towards the winter solstice. Why is that the case? Not quite sure. We are in the northern hemisphere. People would uh, usually follow the summer solstice when they would orient their megalithic sites. This one is different. For some reason, winter solstice was more important for those who were here with this wall. Which brings me to the major question. If this is artificial or natural. When you see the material, this is gray granite. Gray granite. When it comes in a big veins, granite veins, of course it never comes like what we have here. It's a big it's 50 or 100 feet in height, one piece. People then go there, they cut it, if they have proper tools. Granite is one of the hardest materials in nature. On a mock scale, from 1 to 10, granite is at 6.5. When archaeologists and uh, officials archaeological institutes, universities, and so on, talk about the past times. They always mention that until a couple of thousand years back, the only available tools were copper tools. However, copper is very soft. On mock scale from 1 to 10, copper is at 3. So, Hardness of copper and hardness of granite, huge difference. Granite is much more superior. And if you make copper tools, even if they are hardened, they will never be able to shape, to cut granite. That's why when people talk about Egypt and unfinished obelisk in Aswan, they also have granite claiming that uh, they cut it with the copper tools 
it simply does not work that way. Today we use diamond tools to cut bread because diamond is a little bit more harder and superior compared to the bread. So now we have a huge challenge. If this is an artificial world, who had tools, who had such advanced abilities to cut it? Next question, of course, is the transportation. Even if you have a natural granite outcrop here, you still need to cut, to lift. What we see here are the five rows, five rows, and they are not a result of the erosion. How many rows below? Probably at least five more, because when you go on the other side, you can compare the height of these five rows, probably another four to five are below. But now we have ten rows, ten levels of granite rock. This was a huge challenge. When it comes the way how they connect to each other, some of the granite blocks are four-sided, four corners. Some are rectangular, some are almost square. But there are some blocks that have more than four corners, more than four sides. And you are right there. They are called polygonal blocks. As a matter of fact, the very reason I was standing here is the block that's behind us. Let's analyze this block. This block starts from here. The first cone. Go to the left. Second one. Third one. But it means it's the fifth corner. Number six, number seven, eight, nine. First, bottom, we have nine corners. And the nature of it does not make blocks which are polygonal, but rather regular. Nine corners. Done the precise measurements. The length at the base 490 centimeters or 16.2 feet. The height 320 centimeters, 10.5 feet. And the thickness we need to go from the back is 195 centimeters or 6.5 feet. The volume is 1,105 cubic feet or, or 30.5 cubic meter. And we add the specific weight of the granite, it's close to 3. The mass of this block, 30.5 times 3, is 91 ton. 91 ton. That's uh, amazing. Megalithic block. The word megalith is coming from two Greek words. Mega, big, block, uh, lithos is a block of stones, or big stones, big blocks. Anything above one ton is considered megalith. Here we have 91. Ah, this is huge. If this was shaped, transport, and lift it. This is one of the wonders on our planet, not important just for the state of Montana. And when we see that we have all of them of different sizes, it reminds us of sim similar megalithic walls in Peru, Eastern Island, Mexico, Egypt. Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and other places. The last window for the megalithic civilization was between five and eight thousand years. 
for example, in southern England, we have Avery stone circles, Stonehenge, and many other places, Karnak in France, we have uh, Anan Shog or Alestenar in Sweden, Rujnan here in Israel, and so on and so forth. So we have, that, that was the last megalithic window. Before this one, we had several. Some of them are going over 100,000 years, which brings me to the dating of this wall, if made by intelligent hands. And I would use that term, made by intelligent hands. On the American soil, we have had several advanced civilizations, much older than the white European settlers or American Indians. Among them, we have civilizations who built mounds everywhere in the US, from the pyramids in Cahokia National Park to Ohio Circle Mount, showing that they were able to maneuver with millions tons of material. But this is something else, different distinctive construction. It goes much, much deeper in the past. How deep? Hard to say. I would say it's much older than the end of the last ice age, which is about 11,700 years. But then at that time, Montana was probably under thick layer of ice. As a matter of fact, in the last 100,000 years, this thick layer of ice was pretty much in the northern, U.S., what we have U.S. and Canada, Northern Europe, Northern Asia, and so on. Does it mean that it was older than 100,000 years? I don't know. I cannot say that because at this moment, who and when are open questions. But when it comes to the question, why and how do you think that somebody was able to shape the planet with advanced technology, lift it? with the advanced transportation means to orient it to the movement of the sun and when it comes to usage unfortunately this world is energetically quiet today what was its purpose how to say but this place has to be heavily and systematically researched I think we should be able to find many more interesting sites and it will be challenging because the question is where the archaeology stops and where the geology starts. Also, I wanted to say that.